a new series out now. And Diaria actually told you she was writing this character with your voice in mind. How did that conversation ultimately lead you to being cast as Mr. T? It's crazy. I I literally have been saying this over and over again that I feel like I'm living inside of an answer prayer or some kind of crazy manifestation. Um, I still had to do the work. Let's be honest. You know, if, even even if a person is creating something for you, you still have to kind of jump through the hoops of auditioning. And so mm. that was the most nerve wracking part to to audition and then have to wait to, you know, test for the role and still have to wait. Um, it was one of those crazy things where it was like, oh, this is the hardest part. The hardest part is between audition and waiting for the yes right mm. because there's some there's a level of surrender that has to happen yeah. you have to know you did your best um but i auditioned and worked like every other actor and and booked it um so then being on set and like working with my friend every single mm -hmm. day i mean it, it didn't even feel like work um the work was was everything leading up to it so yeah Great answer. Perfect segue to this next question. But there's something so special when a group of collaborators who are also friends come together to create. How did that trust and friendship that you have with her allow you to take agency over your character's arc over this first season? There was a lot of trust. Um, and thank God we were friends because for me as an openly queer Black man, I think it was really, really important that the character um, feel authentic and feel nuanced. Mm -hmm. And I felt like she trusted me with that. Um, and so did Miles, um, who was an amazing executive producer and, and was there, you know, working tirelessly to make sure that this, this show um, was successful. And they both trusted me. There were scenes, I can't remember specifically, but there were moments when I was like, uh, I don't know if he would do this or say this. And so very quickly, we were able to kind of regroup and, and recenter this character. Um, you know, Mr. T is a very specific kind of gay man <laughs> and uh, and i'm really proud of the work that we we've done and kind of yeah. like making sure that he hits a certain space in the the tapestry of the way we represent openly gay men in the media he doesn't really fall into a lot of those stereotypes and so um that trust was super important in making sure that you know as we as we developed this character, we felt like we were telling the truth of who he was. Um, and so, yeah, thank God I had a friend to go to and go, what about this? Or what about mm. that? You know. But also she's a great listener. Do, you know, don't have friends who are writers if you don't want some of the things that you say and do to end up in a script. I mean, in the very first episode, I want everybody to go watch it. Make sure you run and watch DR from Detroit. But in the first episode, there's a line in it that I said to her at like a dinner party like years ago. And she was just kind of like, hmm, let me just mm. put that in my backpack. And it ended up in the script. And so, yeah, there's a lot of authenticity and nuance. But Mr. T is a version of who I used to be. <laughs> so there are times when I'm watching his actions and, and his, his movement through the story. And I'm like, ooh, older Brian would have done that. But I've, I've grown in mm. some ways. In, in some of these areas so yeah you need a writing credit for this show as well and I mean this in the best <laughs> possible way but this is the most unhinged dark comedy that I've ever seen and I could not stop laughing and this genre in particular really encourages improvisation having gotten your start doing improv and having had that illustrious career on the stage where anything can happen how have those experiences prepared you for this moment and how much of what we see on the screen is scripted versus improvised it's a little bit of both. First of all, kudos to you for being a great journalist, for doing your <laughs> research. Um, but yeah, I did I did really start my, my acting career in improv. And I think that something about the combination of like playing something so close to the skin with someone that knows you in real life um, allowed those skills to come back. Because over the years um, in like the journey of my career, it, it's actually been a while, like a really long time since I've, I've been required to use kind of like improv and funny skills. Mm. Um, Cause like you said, DR from Detroit, this show is un unhinged. <laughs> it's She's so good. unhinged. But I think like they really allowed for us to play and to find um, authenticity um, and improv in those, in a lot of the moments in the show, they also knew how to pull us back. So sometimes wow. improv was a way to really open the scene up even if it didn't end up in the last cut, right? Mm. There are scenes improv you know, our butts Smart. off. When you look at it, 
it's like actually going back to the real lines. So kudos for great writing. Um, and then there are some spaces like this riff we do in episode one around like vagrants. There are some improv lines that are that are like made the screen that really make that scene really pop to me. So it's a combination of both. You know, you got to trust the writing. Don't go completely off the rails. And then sometimes, you know, loosen it up a little bit and, and bring in those improv skills. Yeah. Yeah, I think the writing is so great where you do have these hilarious one-liners, but it also feels so grounded in reality. And like you were saying, I think one of the most beautiful things about art is that it reflects the complexity of humanity and how we're not all just one thing. It's an opportunity to show different sides and shades to each of us. And you said in the past that you rarely saw yourself reflected in the media that you were consuming. What does this moment mean to you to know that there might be somebody watching this character who will resonate with it? And what would you tell your younger self who never saw themselves on TV? TV. my god you and these questions i could cry thinking about that honestly um it means everything it means everything um you know we've thrown this word of representation and and all of the the kind of like adjacent words around dei but people don't realize how powerful it is mm -hmm. and how life-changing it is when you can see yourself um everybody on this planet is this like, you know, spirit living in these bodies, walking around trying to figure out life. And, and it can be a lonely journey, um, but there's something powerful when you look up for a moment and you go, oh my God, they're like me. And I think if I could look back at my younger self, what I would say is keep going, your tribe will find you and you mm. will find your tribe. Um, you might not see yourself fully, in one community, you might live in some intersections, but in those intersections, there are people that will see you, that will understand you, and they will love you. And there are older people who've gone before you that will guide you. Um, and that's where the Billy Porters and the Coleman Domingos, who've, who've been working tirelessly in their art and in their craft and in theater, they've finally gotten into the Hollywood space, but they've been friends and mentors for years in my life. And so I'm really thankful for their um, light and for their journey, because a lot of their personal journey, just me witnessing it, um, was hope for me. And I hope to be that to somebody else. Um, right. That's what I would tell my younger self. Yeah. You're doing that for so many people now, such a trailblazer. And music is such an important part of your artistry. How much of a role does it play in the ways that you prepare for a character? And if you had to describe Mr. T's arc in a song, what would it be and why? Ooh, if I had to describe Mr. T's arc in a song, that's a good one. In a song? Jeez. Um, I don't know if I have a song. <laughs> well, you know what it is? It's funny because... I might be leaking this, but there may may or not be a musical moment later on in the season. Mm. Um, so I'll let the musical moment speak for itself. That's how I would describe T. Um, the song you might hear um, that's underscoring an episode later on will describe T to, to a T. I think that um, preparing for his role, it required the most um, transparency that I've ever experienced. You know, in my career... I haven't played a lot of queer men, which is really interesting. I actually have straight mm. friends who've played gay on screen more than I have, who've played gay on stage more than I have. Um, and so this required a lot of revealing. A lot of my other characters that I've played, like George Washington or Marvin Gaye, they require like a lot of research. So like I dive in deep into like the facts of their life, the experiences of their lives, what other people in their lives have said about them, um, any kind of footage or audio that's available to kind of like nerd out over who these people mm -hmm. were. But when it comes to Mr. T, it was a little bit like, can you dare yourself to be seen? Can you dare yourself to be naked in front of the screen? You know, can you dare those parts of yourself that you deemed personal and private, can you reveal yourself? And when I look at Mr. T, the one, one of the things that I'm so proud about is that when I look at the role, um, I don't necessarily see myself masked or transformed. I look at the role and when I look at myself on that screen, I go, oh my God, that is so much me in that. Mm. And so I poured myself into this role and I've taken off a lot to reveal 
who I am in this role. So it's it's deeply personal, deeply personal. Yeah. Has it ever been daunting for you as a storyteller and an artist to be that vulnerable in your craft? What did you learn about yourself through this experience? Um, I, I learned that I was funnier than I thought, which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've learned that my friends see me as a truth teller, which is great. Yeah. Um, because that's kind of who Mr. T is. He's going to mm -hmm. tell the truth in love. Um, I don't always do that in my life. I'm always a truth teller, but I've learned and am learning more and more every day that you can tell the truth in love. Um, and so that's been been a journey. Um, but I think I think it's all been worth it, you know, and I'm still learning and I'm still growing. Um, I don't know if that answers the, the question fully. It kind of it kind of took me into to this rabbit hole of like what it means to to be an unfinished work you know mm. and to, to have these roles that come to you that allow that to be okay and that's what Mr. T feels like to me um I don't think you've seen the most that you're going to see of him um but he as he's assisting Diara in this journey to find this guy um you do get these like little pocket glimpses into where he is personally and you'll get more of that as the season develops um so hopefully we get a season two because i'd love to kind of explode yeah. some of those things yeah it's definitely gonna get picked up for a season two i feel like it's been so critically acclaimed already what do you think is resonating most with audiences it's crazy I, to be honest i think this is an interesting inversion of what i expected from the show i thought hmm. we would be like like uh audience famous and because we're on BET I was like oh my gosh we're gonna be black famous right away right and then the critics will eventually catch on but this experience has been the inversion of that um critics have actually been like really engaged and positive about the show and I feel like when it comes to people it's felt a little bit like more of a slow burn so I'm hmm. wondering if what's going to happen with this show is what my experience was with some of my favorite shows where I, I found them later and I kind of ended up binging the whole first season and maybe yeah. even the second season. Um, it's only been a weekend, right? It's only been one yeah. week since the first yeah. three episodes have come out. We've got a lot of positive response. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. But, um, but I'm excited for people to get their hands on this. Um, you know, we worked on this over a year ago and the strike really delayed the release of this show and so mm. i have to trust that the universe's timing is perfect because we're coming out and we're releasing this show so far removed from when we shot it and so i've changed a lot as a person then mm. since then diara has changed and grown as a person since then so it'd be interesting to see like how audiences receive it and then what we're able to do from this new place that we all are as artists um yeah. like what it would be to kind of move the story forward um after this first season yeah you know yeah. in episode two there's a little bit of a love interest for for mr t what can you tease about how that dynamic and how it'll evolve over season one i'll just say this um that love interest was super important to me because all of our characters end up all these leads in the show yeah. um end up with some form of a love interest Mr. T is not in the space where he's ready to settle down at all. He believes in sexual freedom and he's kind of on this journey to just kind of like live his life. But when you get tied up with the wrong person or the right person at the wrong time, sometimes they stick around. So what I will say <laughs> is what you see from this DJ uh, and whatever those sparks are that flew in episode two, buckle up because they are tied to the plot of of the rest of the season so you will definitely see more of mr t and and this dj for sure mm -hmm.